The 2023 to 24 Tennessee men's basketball season is in the books. It finishes in the program's second ever Elite Eight appearance. They fall to Purdue, final score 72 to 66. Tennessee in the game the whole time, just didn't have enough. I'm Ryan Sylvia, this is No Taylor. We're with Barport.com and the Rivals Network. And I feel like you have to start with the officiating. I'm not saying either way, but I, 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 it's something of note. Zach Eady, his final line, 40 points, 14 for 22 from the free throw line. He grabs 16 rebounds. He's fouled 16 times. He's called for one foul. Rick Barnes at the podium, he, he says, hey, I'm not going to blame it on officiating. It's a tough game to officiate. It, Zach Eady's a, a unique player to officiate. Uh, and he didn't point his finger directly at the officiating or anything like that but it's definitely something that's been talked about. When you open Twitter right now and you look at tweets from this game, that's what you're, you're seeing. Yeah. And so what were your thoughts on, on kind of the way this game was called down low? Yeah, it's, it's one of those games where, like Rick Barnes said, you know, obviously he's not going to lay the blame on that. But it, like you mentioned, it can't be mentioned without mentioning this game because it was a factor. And it did allow, I think, you know, there was a moment there in the game, Tennessee's going on that run. And obviously there were a lot of factors that played played into Tennessee's loss, a lot of stretch, you know, scoring droughts sure. that, that plagued them. But it's hard to find a rhythm. And we knew going into this game that the biggest factor, you know, Dalton Connect had, had an unbelievable performance and his final outing is a ball. Um, but we knew what was going to be the it factor for Tennessee was its bigs. And Jonas Adu and Toby Awaka, Jonas Adu misses most of that second half with foul trouble. Toby Awaka fouls out with, I think, around five minutes left or so. And you're giving really, really critical minutes in a game Tennessee was in throughout to a freshman in J.P. Estrella. And it all comes back to because of the foul trouble that Tennessee got in. It was exactly what happened. Both of Jonas and Toby fouled out in that game in Maui uh, earlier this year. And it comes back and plagues them again. And, and I do agree with Rick. I, I do think Zach, he is a unique player. Yeah. It's kind of hard. Uh, to officiate around him and what he does and his size and everything like that. But it certainly played a factor in Tennessee's loss today. Free throw disparity, 33 free throws for Purdue, just 11 for Tennessee. Like I said, plays a factor, kind of up, up to the individuals to decide if, if that's what impacted the game and to what level it did. If some of those calls are wrong, right, you do have to know the style of play, Purdue's going to get it in the paint. They're going to get it to Zach Eady, and that makes it tough for the officiating crew compared to Tennessee, where when you have Zach Eady on the defensive end, you're not going to take it to the rack as much. So, so there is going to be a free throw disparity just because of style of play and how Zach Eady affects them that way. But I guess up to the to the individual viewer or coach or player to, to kind of place blame wherever they want. But like I said, of note, Rick Barnes, he made sure it was clear, hey, I'm not blaming uh, officiating, but I have to talk about it. Don Connect, you mentioned it. What a great game from him. It's kind of been like that all season. Felt like it wouldn't be a, a March Madness run for Tennessee if he didn't have a game like this. He's going to finish with 37 points, 6 for 12 on three-pointers. Just how big was what Dalton gave Tennessee today? Yeah, I mean, like you said, it, it couldn't have been a more fitting ending for fitting ending for him. I guess it would have been more fitting to get to that Final Four with what he was what he was able to give Tennessee this year. But, you know, you look at that, that final line, 37 points. Uh, kept Tennessee in the game uh, on, an, again, a night that, you know, those, those scoring stretch, those scoreless stretches, those scoring droughts, you know, really plagued them. And, and he was able to kind of shoot through those, get Tennessee back into it. Um, obviously, their defense helped with that a little bit as well. Uh, but, yeah, I, I think Tennessee fans have to appreciate everything that he gave to the program in his one year here back there in the locker room. You know, obviously very somber, as you'd expect. Yeah. But, you know, he comes in there and his first questions are about his – his time here and, and you know, talked about what he said all year. I wish I could stay longer. I wish I could get coached up longer. But a guy that made the most out of, of what he did here in a year. And, uh, you know, I don't think he could have expected this, this season to end any other way than what he did tonight. Yeah, he's a Tennessee basketball legend. Yeah. One year, and when you think about Tennessee basketball legends, you think about guys like Grant Williams, yeah. Chris Lofton, and, and even going farther back, Alan Houston's Bernard Kings. Have, yeah. We're here for more than one year right. and, and really laid the foundation uh, for future teams and we're kind of that point of stability for multiple years. Stone Connect comes in for just one season, but he, he I think he puts his name on that list of, of great Tennessee basketball players, just the level he was at. All-American uh, made his, his case for National Player of the Year, and, and it's really just uh, an incredible season that wraps up here in the Elite Eight. You talked about post defense. JP Estrella and Tobe Awaka, two young guys. Yeah. Tobe doesn't feel like a young guy, but he's just a sophomore. Yeah. JP Estrella, true freshman. Those are your two most effective options yeah. in the paint against Zach Eady. Talking about next year already, how much confidence does that give you when some of those younger guys are able to step up? Of course, you have big departures yeah. Dalton Connect, Josiah Jordan James, Santiago Vescovi, but you have guys 
coming back that if you kind of mix in a couple transfers in the mix and uh, maybe a couple freshmen, you, you have another shot to get back to the stage. Yeah, you've got to feel really confident about just what he was able to give you tonight because I don't think in his career, the next three, two or three years that J.P. Estrella is here, he's going to face a test tougher than he did tonight. And he held his own. You know, he came in and, you, and you're thinking with the foul trouble, you know, you know, here we go again with Tobey and Jonas. Your two biggest options are out. Um, Jonas, obviously, at times this year has been incredible for Tennessee. Tonight, obviously, wasn't one of those. And, you know, a freshman comes in, you're kind of feeling like, well, this may be it. You know, mm -hmm. this is where Purdue's going to take advantage. But, you know, he disrupts a couple of shots. He gets a score himself when Tennessee made that run there to kind of close the gap late. Um, and they've got to feel really good about where they're at with Tobey as well. Um, and But especially JP, a guy that's, you know, we had a couple times, I, I go back to, I think, that Florida game, you know, when he, when he came in and played really well, got some minutes there. Um, but a couple instances this year where you were able to see kind of flashes of what he's going to be able to give you down the road. And I don't think any are better than what he was able to give you tonight. I think the pieces are there to have yeah. a really solid team next year. You just kind of have to find your star. This year it came from the transfer portal and Don Connect. Uh, we, we've seen it come in different fashions for Tennessee under Rick Barnes. It'll be interesting to see if it's a guy that's currently on the roster that maybe you don't expect and he steps up and he plays a big role if they go to the transfer portal and they find someone. But the surrounding pieces feel like they're there. As a guy who wears back, that's massive. Maybe he takes a huge step as a scorer. Obviously a big part of the offense, but maybe he takes a step to that superstar status as, as a college player. We'll have to see, but pieces are there. You could be back here realistically next season. Let's talk about the season as a whole, though, really quick before we wrap this up. Second Elite Eight ever, just where does this stand all time in Tennessee Yeah, basketball. I mean, at, at the very least, it's the second best. Sure. And, and at least in my time watching Tennessee basketball, it's got an argument for being the first, you know, what they were able to accomplish. Uh, you run into a buzzsaw tonight, a team that could very reali realistically not only be in the national championship, but probably poses the biggest threat to UConn going back and back next weekend. But, um, yeah, just, just an incredible season. You throw in the fact you got to the Elite Eight. Uh, you were in this game until, you know, the final seconds. Uh, the fact that you won the SEC in a year where the SEC was really, really good. You won the regular season title. Um, I think overall, if you're a Tennessee fan, you got to look back and be really proud of what this team accomplished. And then the numbers, the, the, the stuff, the, you know, guys that will live in the record books now forever, like Dalton Connect, Zakai Zeno, Santiago Vesco, Josiah Dwayne James, you name it. Uh, I know a lot of, some of those guys were here for five years, so they couldn't help but break some records. But, um, yeah, I mean, you got to be pleased with this year. I think it's it's obviously a success. I think also what it does is it probably puts Rick Barnes as the best men's basketball yeah. coach that's sure. ever coached at Tennessee. You hear the Bruce Pearl arguments because he was the one that got them to an Elite Eight. Well, now Rick joins that club, Ray, Ray Mears. Uh, you, you hear some other names floated around. I think you can pretty confidently say yeah. Rick Barnes is the best coach that, that's ever coached in Knoxville on the men's basketball side, of course, Pat Summit. Yeah. Still still probably the, the greatest coach, you can argue, that in, in general, Robert right. Nealand, that, as the best that's ever been on campus. But sure. men's basketball side, I think you got to say it's Rick Barnes and what he's been able to do here at Tennessee. Throwing in a SEC tournament title, too. First yeah. one since the 70s. So big stuff for, from Rick Barnes. Getting them to this stage, of course, Team's not happy right now. They felt like they had a chance to win the national championship. That was something Rick talked about in the post-game press conference, that he still feels like this team had enough to be national champions, but ultimately the, the path ends here in Detroit at the Elite Eight. We'll have season recap stuff. We'll start previewing next year. Football season is, of course, going to be on everyone's minds coming up, what Josh Heifel's been able to do on the football side of things. Spring practice still going on. And baseball today completes a, a pretty – significant series win over Georgia after how that first game went and Lady Vols basketball as well expecting news uh, coming from them in terms of returners and people with extra years of eligibility so for everything you need Tennessee Athletics we have it all over at VolReport.com links to everything you need is in the description thank you for watching